Okay, these are, if you want to call them rules, they're actually timing guidelines for uh, Morse code. We'll start with number one. You have a dot, dot and a dash, but we're not going to call them dots and dashes. We're going to call them dits and daws. It sounds kind of silly, but it sounds more like the sound of Morse code than a dot and a dash. So in the word OK, you have da, 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 da. It sounds better. It sounds more like code, Morse code, if you go, rather than going dash, 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 dot, dash. Da, 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 da. Sounds more like uh, Morse code. Our timing on Morse code, number two, our timing, you have a dit is the unit of time. That's the basic unit of time is one dit. Whether you make the dit a half a second or a fraction of a half a second or a full second long, that's going to be the rest of the timing for how you do your code. A dash is three units of time, so it's three dits. Three times the length of a dit. That's your da. The space between dits and da's in a single letter, so you take the letter A, is a dit. So A is a dit da, so you're going to have a dit, and then you're going to have a space that's a dit long, and then you're going to have a da, which is three dits long. You could call the space a silent dit. So it's going to be dit, a silent dit, and then your da. Then number four, you're going to have a space between your letters in a word, such as the word as. You, it has an a, so it's a dit, da, and then you're going to have your dits, dit, dit, dit. Your space between them is three dits. It fits in here, three dits. So you have dit, silent, da, three silents, dit, dit, dit. Now, number five, you're going to have your space between words is seven dits. So that'll be here in the uh, two words as him. You would have dit, da, you have dit, da, three dits between this next letter, which is an S, dit, dit, dit. And then you're going to have a space between your words as seven dits right here. And then your H is four dits, dit, 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 dit. And then your space between your letters over here in the H-I-M, you're going to have dit, 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 da, da. Our A as in as is going to be our as him is going to be Just remember to make your spaces between your words seven dits long. Space between your letters, three dits long. Okay, this rule number five, which is kind of my rule, it's a pet peeve of mine. So, sometimes people, sometimes ham operators, will have a letter at the end of a sentence that ends with a da. Uh, let's take him, say this sentence ends in a him, with the word him. They'll drag out this last M over here to a real long, because they think it adds finesse. They'll and it can be confusing to someone that's new listening to this, and they have this long M, and then all of a sudden they start another word to their next sentence, and it start, it's goes on they're trying to figure out what that last letter was because of this long da. So I, I think you should not get in the habit of doing it. The only time it's really useful is if it's the end of your turn, the end of your round, when you're communicating, they will uh, send a K, which a K, but they'll drag that out. They'll end it and they mean to hand it back to you, they'll go, and that's okay, because it kind of makes you alert. Oh, that's he's handing it back to me without thinking, oh, it's a K. What does a K mean? They'll do that, and that's fine. There's nothing wrong with that. And then at the end of the QSO, there's an SK, meaning I'm signing off. I'm getting off the air. And they'll drag out that K also. And the SK is sent as one unit. So they'll go. 
And that's okay too. It alerts you that, oh, it's the end. So with that, it's, it's, a, it's okay to do that. Now, some of you may have heard of Farnsworth. What about Farnsworth's contribution to Morse code? He has this in the red. The old method of doing Morse code where the, the time is the length of measured here is you did. A long did, if you were going to send, this is as him, again, as him. What the hell was that? That is so slow. Someone that is learning code, it might be comfortable, but once you get up to like 10 words a minute, you won't be able to read that. It was difficult for me to even send it. So Farnsworth said, even when you're into, the, into learning Morse code for the first time, send it this way. Farnsworth says, send your letters and words at a higher speed let's say 10 to 18 words per minute, but then space your words farther apart. This allows your mind to get used to the higher speed of the letters and the words and the rhythm while giving the brain time to decode the code while you're still new at this. Getting used to the faster letters and words earlier on in your training will make raising your overall speed easier and faster. You'll be sending and receiving code at higher speeds sooner than later. So, if I was going to do Farnsworth, it would sound like this. See, I didn't drag out my dits long like these ones. And it's easier for your mind to time it. I'm not a high-speed code person. I did pass a lot. Years ago, I passed the 20-word requirement when they still had code required in ham radio. I did do that, but since then, I've kind of slowed down. I'm about 18, 17 to 18 words per minute. And if I heard someone sending this, That's about, I don't know, that might be three or four, maybe five words per minute. I wouldn't be able to copy it. If he sent it like this, I would. And if I sent it like this and he trained this way, he would. So that's your Farnsworth contribution to timing. It goes a little bit against this. But not really if you're just stretching these out more. So that's your timing lesson. And that's the heart of this. The rest of it is just practicing it.